The Simpsons may have conquered the world, but they started life as just a tiny gleam in the mind of one offbeat comic strip artist, Matt Groening. The mischievous, yellow-skinned, spiky-haired Bart first drew breath back in 1986. Before The Simpsons walked the earth, Matt's only other taste of success had been as the creator of an underground comic strip, Life in Hell, but he always knew that one day television would come crawling. I was waiting, when is Hollywood gonna call me up? Come on, I'm doing this weekly comic strip and finally, ring, 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 it's James L. Brooks who uh, loves my strip Life in Hell and uh, he gives me my first job on the Tracy Ullman show doing animation and he said, you can do whatever you want. We were looking for, um, we call them bumpers, which go between the acts. And we decided nobody ever tried to make them entertaining. So we tried to make them entertaining. And I had a cartoon that I'd gotten as a gift from somebody that was Matt's cartoon, The Los Angeles Way of Death, the way that people die in Los Angeles, California. And I had remembered this because it was my first exposure to Matt. So we called him in. Well, The Simpsons really began in the 15 minutes that I had to prepare for a meeting with Jim Brooks to present him with my ideas. I was originally going to do My Life in Hell characters uh, in animated form, and then at the last moment I got scared. I thought, what if this fails miserably? Uh, I'll have ruined my characters, I'll go crawling back to my, my weekly comic strip. So I decided to make up new characters on the spot, hence The Simpsons, uh, named after my own family. I wasn't particularly feeling creative that uh, in that 15 minutes, so I quickly named them after my own family. I do have a father named Homer, a mother named Margaret. Marge is close. I thought Marge was a slightly funnier name, and I have two younger sisters, Lisa and Maggie. I thought if I made the main kid Matt, that would be a little too obvious, so uh, I changed him to Bart. If you want to know why the early Simpsons on the Tracy Ullman show look so weird, it's because I didn't know what I was doing. I just would draw little sketches to give to the animators. I thought they were going to clean them up and make them look like professional cartoons. It turns out that all they were doing was tracing my drawings. They may not have looked like any other cartoon, but the Simpsons proved so popular that Fox took a leap into the void and gave Matt his very own full-length show. To air the Simpsons, Fox had to commit $10 million to produce 13 episodes before they saw a single one. And then again, it was people producing it who had never done a show, an animated show, half an hour long. All that had been done was the shorts. Fox finally, you know, got the idea that this would make a good series, um, but they were a little hesitant at first because primetime animation was something that hadn't been seen on uh, American television for about a generation. Animation was just totally dead on primetime. Nothing had succeeded since the Flintstones 20 years earlier. And what encouraged me about the show was that it was James Brooks and Sam Simon and Matt Groening were really talented. The stories that they were already working out seemed hilarious, and the characters were great, the shorts were really funny. So I thought, you know, if this gets on the air, I think it actually could turn a few heads. And so by Christmas 1989, the first ever episode of The Simpsons was broadcast, and it turned more than a few heads. Here was something that was smart and funny and hip and original and reminded us that something that's really family entertainment will appeal to the least sophisticated member of the audience and the most sophisticated member of the audience on different levels. This was just what the upstart Fox network needed, a completely unexpected hit. It put them on the map, as well as creating a bonanza for the spin-off industry. One of the most delightful aspects of Simpsons mania in the early 1990s was how many different groups appropriated Bart Simpson. Uh, there were black Bart t-shirts. There was a t-shirt with Bart shaking hands with Nelson Mandela. There were Irish Bart t-shirts. There were Mexican Bart t-shirts. There were vegetarian Bart t-shirts that said, don't eat a cow, man. There were pro-Gulf War t-shirts with Bart standing on Saddam Hussein's head. There were anti-war t-shirts with Bart protesting the war. It was amazing how many people could uh, take this cute little guy and uh, make him their own. Perfecto! Everybody smile. I'm going to set the automatic timer. <laughs> 